please let practice. Maybe we should finish walking first. <laughs> I'm just waking up. I do not feel like working out right now. interruptions. Actually, it was a pretty good workout. I feel like I got a handle on this week now. Stuff. <laughs> you already had breakfast. Right now, I'm eating an egg from our Amish farmer on top of some bread that my daughter made. I feel like I'm on f***ing Little House of the Prairie or something like that. Hmm. These are not my shorts. Cami just took another inch off her shorts this morning. Or how had you do it? Yeah. I didn't want to say that because people are going to be like, oh, Ben made Cammy do that. This morning when we were working out, I'm looking at this girl. I feel like we're on our honeymoon. And I would call it more like a sexual revolution. Yeah. I, I was going to call it a sexual renaissance. Our honeymoon sucks, by the way. So this is really like, good. this is not sucking. There is nothing more attractive to me than Cammy <laughs> shedding fear. The skin, I never had complaints about the lengths of her shorts. You know, more skin, it's like interesting, tighter clothes, okay. I mean, I know what she looks like without clothes. But the biggest thing where now when I see this girl, when I'm working out this morning and I'm trying to get, you know, my muscles built, but I can't even concentrate because she looks so hot. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You think I'm just like trying to be a good Christian husband and be like, oh, my wife's the hottest wife on the planet. I don't do that bullshit. But seeing her, the changes that she's been through in the last two or three weeks, I think shedding fear and shedding, I don't know how to say it. I think, that's, I think you're shedding a culture that we didn't realize was a culture. We thought it was um, righteousness and holiness, like synonymous, but actually it was a Christian culture that it's we were raised in. It's still just preferences. And I'd rather shed fear and shame than claim righteousness by what I wear or don't wear. But it is so hot to watch you going through this. I don't know. I can't think of anything more attractive than a woman who's comfortable with herself. I have a feeling some people might say, oh, well, if you're wearing short shorts, you're doing it to get the attention of guys. Like, I know you, and I know that's not why you're doing it. You don't give a shit about what other guys think of you. <laughs> Um, I mean, as a person, I I do in a way, but well, like, I mean, like in what would accurate. drive you to make a drastic yeah. step, like cutting your shorts like that? You're like like not trying to get more yeah. guys' attention. But I would even say, even if I was like, that's like not the end of the world either. Like I wouldn't want to shame a woman for doing that. Like shame and fear can go all these different ways. It's actually shame and fear is shame and fear. Like. It can take so many different forms. Amen. I feel like I just did my quiet time for the day. I'm excited. It's hard to keep my eyes and hands off you in the kitchen. Along with this shedding of fear, 
There's also, when you shed fear, it bleeds, you start seeing it in all areas of your life. There's a lot of change happening and, in your life now. And the other area I'm seeing it is just being not just okay with my own boundaries, but voicing my own boundaries. And with Ben especially. It's always yeah. been a hard area for me. I would just rather say not say no, because that was just too much work to <clears> say <throat> no. Well, yeah, t today you told me you didn't want to have sex today, tonight. Yeah. Which normally this is a sex day, but break. I know what's been going on the last three days. I appreciate her saying, I don't feel like I have the energy to do it today. Yeah. Or to engage in that type of intensity, then to just like ignore it or, or or like show up but really i'm not showing up yeah not or placate me and say like oh well i'll try but really mm -hmm. really you're saying no but you're not saying no so i think even the fear it's not just with cutting your shorts shorter it's actually standing up to me and other people and just letting more of who god made you to be come out is how mm -hmm. i see it amen that's two quiet times for the day now <laughs> We're sitting here doing our writing and one of our fellow vlogger friends just showed up. Some hey. of you guys might recognize Dana because a lot of people that found our vlog early on found him through uh, the Schmoovies vlog. Schmoyers? Schmoovies? It's confusing. Yeah. Yofi, Yofi, Sababa. About your quiz. Um, she's ready. To roll. Okay. I feel, I feel I'm okay. Time for some dinner out in the garden. Yes. Okay, we are on take two of this. We tried to film this right after dinner and it didn't go very well for whatever reason. So then we went and had our family recovery 12 step group meeting. That went really well. I feel like we can get this this time. I've been really into Enneagram recently. I got this book for Ben's birthday because I wanted him to go, keep going on like his self discovery because I think more than maybe any other personality, his is like misunderstood. And I just wanted him to like not feel crazy and be like, this is this is who you are, like celebrate it. So I got really into it and- Like really into it. Like, like she wants to read it to me in bed. Well, that's how I get into things. Like I wanna like read it out loud to him so that he like experiences it with me. Like this is cool. Ben's personality type is Type eight, it's called the Challenger. A few key points for him are eights enjoy taking on challenges themselves as well as giving others opportunities that challenge them to exceed themselves in some way. That characterizes our marriage so well. For the first 12 years of our marriage, I didn't know why, why was he like beating down my door, like trying to like make me experience things that like I was content not experiencing because he's an eight. They are charismatic and have the physical and psychological capacities to persuade others to follow them into all kinds of endeavors. <laughs> so he persuaded, he persuaded me to marry him. Literally, How's it went? quite literally like eights have enormous willpower and vitality. They feel most alive when they're exercising these capacities in the world. I see that in Ben, like when he, when he's not engaged in something really big, at least to him, he starts kind of withering. They often refuse to give in to social convention and they can defy fear, shame, and concern about the consequences of their actions. Although they are usually aware of what people think of them, they do not let the opinions of others sway them. This has been so hard for me. They go about their business with a steely determination that can be awe-inspiring, even intimidating to others. I don't want to be intimidating to people. Like, I want to be like a teddy bear or like, yeah, I don't know. 
inspire people like See, I want to intimidate people. <laughs> really? Well, I mean, I admire, I don't know if I want to, but I, I like admire it. So I feel like it's kind of one of those things that if you have it, you don't want it. If you don't have it, you well, want it. Well, I think what these personality traits show a bit is you don't get to pick and choose. Like, yeah. you have to take the good or the bad. People have applied different spiritual labels to me, like pride, or you're being a jerk. Some of those things could be true, but I think there's, deep down, I do have a heart to change people and it um, or to help them like maybe God made me this way mm -hmm. and I still have to grow through the immaturity but people are like oh you just try and be different like people say that to me all the time yeah. like oh you're just you know you're not gonna see that movie because everyone else likes it and I'm like sorry like I'm not doing it on purpose uh, they have a steady inner drive they take initiative make things happen have a great passion for life I mean I think this is what attracted me so much to you I mean, that's the, the opposite of me, like, right there. You don't care about life? Well, I just, I struggle with numbing myself. So it's like, I'm gonna marry someone who's like, I do stop not, like, numbing yourself. Numbness is my worst fear. Eights are willing to take the heat knowing that any decision cannot please everyone. I now know that, but it took 38 years to like get there. Ben inherently knows that. I feel like if it pleases everyone, it's got to be wrong. Yeah, that's really like, fascinating. So I am type nine, the peacemaker. So not pleasing other people. So for those of you that don't know, this book, there's like a test you take and it answers questions and that's how you get your type. Mm -hmm. I think you can do all this online for free. We can post it down below. Yeah. Most devoted to this quest for internal and external peace for myself and for other people. They respond to pain and suffering by attempting to live in a state of premature peacefulness, whether it is in a state of false spiritual attainment or in more gross denial. So this is where the numbing comes in, I think. Nines, <laughs> Nines grew up feeling that having needs, asserting themselves, getting angry, creating difficulties for their parents was not allowed. They were afraid that if they did that, they wouldn't be loved. As a result, nine children never learn to assert themselves adequately or by extension um, to actualize themselves independently of their parents and significant others. They learn to stay in the background where things could not get to them. In adulthood, their psychic space is so crowded with the issues and agendas of the people whom they are trying to accommodate that they are often unable to hear the voice of their own needs or desires. You can imagine marrying a nine marrying an eight, that's gonna be a struggle. <laughs> I feel like 17 years into marriage, you're hearing your voice for the first time. Yeah. Like now, you like know what you want. Yep. I would ask yeah. you, I'm like, what do you want? You're like, well, I don't but care, I, or I don't I know. I couldn't. And I'm like, well, tell me, you know. And now I'm starting to do that. Um, Cause you're maturing. So the, the theory mm -hmm. behind this is, there's more mature version of an eight or a nine, but Cammy's never gonna be a, four, whatever that is, you yeah. know, that God kind of made you a certain way. Yeah. And this helps understand that, but for for me, one of the main values of this process, watching mm -hmm. you get all excited about this and, yeah. and being exposed to it over the years is, I think if I didn't know that there was different ways God made people, because I can't mm -hmm. see it, and my personality type is like really strong, like I, and I assume I'm the best type. So when I see you and you don't care, I feel like you're lazy. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're apathetic. I feel like um, you're out to lunch. But really, this helps describe it in a way for me that's like, oh no, you really care about peace. Mm -hmm. Like inner peace, far more, I can't relate to that because I don't, I'm just not wired that way. Yeah. And it makes me respect you mm -hmm. in a way that's really naturally hard to do. And I think one of the things that's happening to me is my inner peace is getting so strong that I can take asserting myself, I can take heat. At least in my head, I'm like, oh, if I assert myself, it's gonna like, my inner peace isn't f as fragile as it used to be. And I really attribute that to God though. I mean, like, that's what I attribute it to. Like I have, I have something more solid to hold on to. Nines get into the habit of saying yes to things that they do not really want to do. This is the story of my life with my sex life. <laughs> and it would frustrate Ben to no end, and really myself too, 
because here I am saying yes, but I really didn't want to, so I'm like passive aggressively then saying no or building up resentment over time. And eventually that like catches up to you. I mean, it's hard for me to say no in general, but in that area, that was the hardest place for me to say no. Probably because that was what was most dear to you. And I knew if I said no, it would like come back at me and like destroy my inner and peace. And it wasn't worth it for you. And it wasn't worth it for me. You said no today. I did. Yes. And it's funny mm -hmm. high-fiving you about that, but I think I'm learning health for Cammie is going to look different mm -hmm. than it, health for me will yeah. look. For I'm me, never... I need to like step down yeah. and listen better. For her, she right. actually needs to like speak up. But I am never going to assert myself like Ben. I was not made to do that. So that's what pisses me off when people are like, you're a doormat. Uh, that's who I fucking am. I'm not a doormat, but I don't assert myself the way you do. Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> Some of our kids were taking these tests and they were like getting into it. And memory, we think she might be a seven, which is the enthusiast, which reading it, it makes sense. Sevens are enthusiastic about almost everything that catches their attention. That is memory. They're bold and vivacious, pursuing what they want in life with a cheerful determination. Their minds move rapidly from one idea to the next. As good as I am about cleaning up messes, like I cannot keep up with memories, messes. And really they're like creative projects. They're not messes, you know? They're, they're also messes. But they're also messes. And I've, but I've had to learn to like appreciate who she is. Without being able to address this mm -hmm. w from this perspective, we would just say, oh, you're being disrespectful, you're being lazy, you're, um, I don't know, not a good kid because you're not, the other kids clean up their yeah. messes. When really she's just so different. Yeah. And part of the drawback of that side of things is when you're always thinking about the next thing, you don't clean up very well. So it, it's helping us to pre not just yeah. come down on her, but also appreciate and celebrate her and help her mature on her track. Yep and not compare her to our track. Right, right. I have really benefited greatly from reading this stuff. Um, I feel like I'm just discovering things about myself, things I always knew were there, but I never could put words to it. And I never could explain it. And I even like discounted it, or I'm like, kind of what you are doing with yourself, like, oh, I, I want to change myself, but when I, I wish read I was this, a nicer guy. yeah, when I read this, I'm like, no, you don't want to change yourself. You just want to become a healthier you. That's it. Like, don't change, you know, sure like it would be a tragedy to try to change because first of all, you're never going to change yourself. And then second of all, you're not celebrating how God actually made you. We need, we need all of these people like in the world. I feel like I'm creating peace right now. Yay. <laughs> Zero nine. <laughs> okay. There you have it. See you guys tomorrow. Um, my personality wing is like Hillary Clinton, and Doves is Donald Trump. And I win, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna be president. <laughs>